The last time we did a video like this was four months ago or back in March, and well, a lot has changed. First of all, welcome back, Hobbin Lad, back to the channel. Hey guys. This is our second episode of this podcast structured style videos here. Um, but why are we here? Why are we making this video today? And why has a lot changed? Well, the whole point of this video is to hopefully answer those questions. We're going to go ahead and break down our entire structure of how we run the video game store and maybe touch upon some things that relate to our second store, AVCL. Of course, both store links are now in the description. Uh, so make sure to go ahead and check out to see some of the changes that we've made because uh, there's some really exciting stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started right away with inventory sourcing. So back in January, we had the goal of doubling the store. And what we'll common lad, do you wanna remind the viewers of how that went? Not very well. Yeah, we started with this idea as if we had just purchased as much inventory as possible, really maxed ourselves out, then we could potentially see a huge amount of growth in the store. The problem was that we ended up swapping ourselves with tons of items and not enough time to list them, as well as tying up some of our cash that we could have used for other things like shipping and marketing and all the other expenses yeah. that we had to deal with in this inventory. What we ended up with is what a lot of resellers call a death pile and it was building very quickly in our offices taking up room valuable space and it was just a pile of stuff that was not listed for sale not making us any money and ultimately did definitely cost us some growth so one of our newest strategies moving forward was to alter the way that we look at inventory and the way that we purchase it to adapt it which may seem like a very logical thing but it's adapting it to what we actually are able to list not what we you know, in theory, we want to be able to list not as much as we can buy, not as, as much as available. It strictly comes down to we need to have, you know, 200 items up this week. So we need 200 items for this week. And it's no more, no less. Right. A hundred percent. You you got that right. Right out of the bat. Now, obviously, the best pile was a really big thing. And that was mainly caused because not only were we buying huge amounts of inventory, but we we're also buying inventory from Value Village, which sometimes didn't work. And we just left it off to the side. Uh, and we'll touch upon that a little bit later on how we managed to really eliminate that sort of stuff. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I think cash flow was also a little bit of a problem because we had a lot of sales in January. We had a lot of sales in February, February still being a record month. But we spent so much money trying to keep up those sales and just because it was working clearly. So we we didn't, uh, we were somewhat like, quote unquote delusional in a way because we were, we were, I guess, uh, stuck with all these sales. And we were thinking that if we just keep buying and keep mass listing 100, 200, 300 a week, um, that it would just continue, but unfortunately it didn't. And so we had to really change our approach. Like Combin that said, we really did sit down. We took a look at, first of all, how many items we had in our death pile, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and on, and then overall, why are we buying so much? What's happened and what's essentially, what is going wrong with the process that we're left with so many things at the end. And are, it, yeah, and if yeah, I could add it too, in February, uh, you know, like you say, we got a record number of sales and that was due to this increase, this change in strategy of incoming inventory and us just trying to work as hard as we can to get as much stuff listed as possible. Most people, I think you will agree, uh, would not say that February would be their best no, month. In fact, it's no. typically one of the worst months in the year. So to have that as a record month really showed us something. But when we looked at the cash flow for that month, that's where we knew we were in trouble. So we decided to stop and take it back. And it's only now in the last month or two that we've actually caught up and almost beaten the February numbers now yeah. using a much more sustainable strategy. Right. And what is the strategy? Well, for well, this actually this strategy allowed us to have our second best month ever in June. And obviously June isn't exactly the the best month of the year for selling. Um, so it's kind of where the summer slowdown starts to hit, but we had the exact opposite effect. And that was because we simply stuck to one supplier. We have a brand new supplier. We, I've actually mentioned him on my channel quite a bit. And we have been buying 300 games at a time for $1 a piece. Most of these games are already ready to be listed. Some of them need to be refurbished, but because we've only been purchasing from him, we make sure that every single game has been fully listed before we approach him again with a new lot. Uh, and on top of that, that meant that we're no longer going to Value Village, we're not doing garage sales, we're not hitting up other people, or if people are hitting us up for any sort of deals, we simply said, well, wait till we are once again ready to buy stuff. Um, and I think we've actually just stuck to one person. It's worked out quite well. And I think we'll hopefully be able to continue doing more business with our current supplier. Yeah, it was a really fantastic thing that we were sort of able to alter and save a whole bunch of time that was being wasted sourcing. Uh, I think as a beginner and maybe as a smaller store, hitting places like thrift stores and garage sales and things of that nature are definitely still profitable and can be done. But the way things were going here, our thrift stores were getting more competitively yeah. priced. They were selling online and actually competing directly with us. And 
uh, and even garage sales and things. Obviously up north, there's none in the winter. There's a whole bunch of factors that go into these things. So if we wanted to build something that we wanted to be a real business and that we wanted to add inventory to on a consistent level, we needed to find a way to identify some consistent suppliers so we can make sure that we would always have those goods coming in to support the business and doing it on a kind of uh, one product at a time scale going to thrift stores and things of that nature is just not the way to do it, especially not at a large scale. Right. And that is what our whole point of this right now, the current goal of the store is to get it to be one of the biggest video game stores. We want to be able to actually provide a living for ourselves with this operation. Uh, and that is the whole point, which is why we really had to re reapproach how we buy inventory. But I think we mainly touch up upon everything that has to go with buying inventory. Anything else? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Our inventory flow is very stable now. It's gotten to a point where we know exactly what we're getting in, exactly the how much quality, we have left as well. How much we have left and how quickly we can deal with it. And it's made it a very streamlined process that we don't even think about anymore. Exactly. Uh, next up is the number side, the accounting side. Um, obviously, we talked a whole lot already about cash flow. Uh, anything else you think we should add about that? No, I think, like we said, June was our, most, our our best month, which again is not a typical thing that you would see in June. So February and June being two best months is kind of unheard of. And if you looked back at our previous years and sort of our uh, on a more standard basis of what we were doing, you would typically see that sometimes January would be good. You'd have those really high months in fourth quarter and then maybe sometime in March. But uh, so it was very interesting to be able to look at our numbers like that and notice the differences. Right, and obviously our cash flow is now positive because we've we've kept our buying to a minimum while still being able to list consistently, which has helped kind of balance things out. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it continues to do so. Uh, obviously, because we're buying so much inventory, we had the problem of not really necessarily having enough cash within the business to afford it. So we did unfortunately get into a little bit of debt to ourselves, not yeah. to anyone else. So we have now, I think, fully paid off everything for ABCL and we're very close to, uh, at least we're working our way towards clearing all the debt for the video game store, which means that we should soon hopefully be profitable on all ends for both stores, which is actually pretty big for us, especially because most businesses these days don't really go into profits uh, as quickly as we are we're able to mm -hmm. yeah and when we talk about that we can still look at our income statement which has been giving us a positive net income but the issue here was that we were actually spending more than what our net income was at the end of every single month so when we look at the cash flow it gives us a much deeper insight into that and sort of shows us where that displacement of cash is when you have uh you know maybe whatever the net income is and then you have a way higher spend on the month in terms of the cash flow then you know that there must be some external factors. And in this case, it was sort of us going in and giving the business extra money to initially uh, purchase more goods as much as possible, which we realized was a mistake. All right, yeah, 100% agree. I think that's really about it for that. That was kind of been our main focus. First of all, getting cash flow uh, positive again, because a business isn't a business without good cash flow. And then obviously paying off debt because we don't want to, we want to obviously be able to start paying yourself <laughs> a really, you know, or at least a living uh, wage here, because that's the whole point of this. So obviously uh, some really good progress there. But moving on, testing, cleaning, and refurbishing. Uh, we honestly had this down, I think pretty much from the beginning. Uh, we've just, I think we skipped one step now, which is testing. We no longer test games if we think it's there's, we're not going to refurbish them. Yeah, we should almost phrase it as an additional step that we've added to our process, which is the inspection step. Right, yeah. So instead of testing, it's just inspecting and cleaning with water. It's inspecting and cleaning, and then we move on to testing for anything that requires it. And we still guarantee all of our games work, um, but that's sort of a step that we use to eliminate some of the time that goes into testing all these items. That was at one point probably one of the largest time spends in hours yeah. in terms of getting things listed on the platform. Right, like, I honestly I didn't even realize this, but... Uh, now that you mentioned that, I think before we started doing this a couple months ago, especially beginning of this year, we get huge lots of five, 600 games and we'd spend like a whole week just testing and, or just simply testing games that already work. And then I think then we, we look at how many returns are we getting that of actually games not working and it was very few. So we decided it's actually worth the risk and obviously games that we think are not going to work or need refurbishing go through the testing system and they get refurbished so every game still gets a second chance of finding a new home but it's really kind of helped streamline things it's helped save us a lot of time and that way we're still able to hit all of our daily goals while being able to build up a draft bank and all those sort of extra uh, things to help us uh, keep things as efficient as possible yeah absolutely so the inventory or sort of uh, the way that we deal with the inventory has stayed relatively the same with the exception of that one difference which i think has really helped to streamline the entire process again like you said things are still getting refurbished things yeah. are still getting tested but there's that extra sort of step that filters out some of the things that were definitely going through an unnecessary step. 
right and we did actually this is mainly for the second store and for consoles for consoles or anything that we updated in terms of testing i don't or... think so we still run down the entire console and make sure that they're still functional a lot of our electronics we do the same thing with there are some that we're more lenient with and we list as is or not working now without yeah. even bothering because we've had some issues in the past things like receivers things like uh, maybe cassette tapes and things that are cassette tape players, I should say, and things of that nature, which we are just sort of pushing off now because we can't guarantee them the same way that we can guarantee things that we know, like consoles and things. So we try to focus our energy and time when it comes to testing on those more valuable things that we know we can get working and keep working when the buyer receives them. And we can do a factory reset and get those sent out the door the same way that we've always done it. Yep, 100%. Uh, and then obviously we also had movies to our kind of... Uh a daily listing type of operation for the second store and those i think we just take a look at the same thing just disc condition uh and that's just about it right correct do yeah your, do your favorite movies I don't think not so. usually no i think they're usually in pretty good condition yeah, as well the so ones we get are really good there's that all right moving on to listing because here is where things change not more on the listing itself but on how we list and when we list so now we have a new daily listing schedule we started this back in june uh, we started with 20 games each a lot of these 20 games on the video game store uh and then that essentially was for five of the seven days we did that for two three weeks i think we went through about one or two lots there and then we noticed that we already have a whole bunch of games sitting in our draft bank so we decided to go ahead and list every single day seven days a week uh 20 games uh, and i think we're slowly gonna start building up to 40 50 uh, and then essentially how high we think we can go in the future but that's been a really big part of our new kind of approach to listing stuff and it's really helped us quite a bit obviously draft banks have been a big part of this uh so essentially we won't necessarily be listing every single day but we'll drop listings every day so just because within our busy busy schedules it's a lot more convenient to simply test two three hundred games in one day of the week and then list those games the next day of that week and then simply focus on the other things while simply just dropping those listings as days go on um and then I think, yeah, that, that's kind of about it. Slowly approaching our listing goals. We're not listing 100 games a day and then listing nothing for the next three weeks because we're too tired. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a really important thing. The consistency that we've gotten down to uh, on our eBay store is, I think, one of the biggest changes that we've made and has definitely uh, resulted in the most impact on our store, whether it be sales and listings and even just our own uh, health and personal time when we don't have to worry about uh, you know, getting listings up every day. We know that we have this bank, this reserve that we'll consistently be able to provide for the eBay store if we can't. Uh, and also it doesn't mean that we're, you know, running around last minute trying to do 200 games. Uh, you know, we have a very consistent schedule now. We know exactly what we're doing. Whereas before it was always a little up in the air. Right, and, and also not every day do we feel like listing stuff. So I think, I, I'll speak for myself here, but I feel like every like one or two days of, of the week, um, I just get super hyper focused into it. And there's days where I just wake up and I'm like, today I'm gonna be just playing video games. And that's fine because I've already got all my drafts up. Everything's already ready to go for the next one, two. It's really three weeks. But I think usually two weeks is usually how many games we have saved up if we do everything on the first one and two days after getting the lot. But some days you just feel like only doing 20 games a day. And that's also fine because that's the requirement that we've set for ourselves. And we've been keeping this up for, I believe, about a month and a half now. So yeah. we've been going strong and the plan is to not stop. We haven't had any days of no, with no sales. We've, uh, I think we've basically kept pretty consistent sales with the, with some days being a lot higher than others, but those are usually kind of once a week type of thing now. And just to add to that too, people might say if you have extra time in your day and you're not listing because you've already done these listings, you're two weeks out, whatever it is. Uh, is that not being wasted? Should that not be used listing that's more and more point. things? Because that's a really good point. But one of the things that we found is that, again, it comes into how the business is performing and how many games we need to provide to the business to keep growing consistently, how many games the business can afford. So we may have extra time, but we don't necessarily have extra money or extra resources to deal with another extra 100 games. So that's why we're trying to progress it up very slowly over time versus trying to hit it all at once. So we might start with 20, 30, 40 listings and move our way up that way. Uh, without going and adding an extra, you know, okay, well, now we have all this extra time. Let's do 100 right now because we can't always sustain it. And I think that was one of the biggest learning uh, sort of things that we, we learned uh, at the beginning of this year. Right. And also, I think when we switched over to just doing 20 a day, that was like a really big change for us because we we're so used to 
So yeah, I'm just gonna grind out two, 300 games and that's just it. Uh, we had to really change it. And that was kind of difficult because you do 20 games and that maybe takes, you know, an hour, two hours tops. And then you're just like, what do I do with the rest of my yeah. time now? Uh, so that was definitely a, a pretty big change. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it for, for listings. I think we mentioned obviously sales and eBay store. There's some pretty big changes that I think we should probably talk about yeah. that we recently implemented. So. Uh, now that we've got our sales somewhat consistent, we've got our listings consistent, our inventory is consistent. The next part of it, uh, the next part of improving the store is obviously sales conversion. So we took a lot of time, we've done a lot of research, and we've decided to try some things out, especially especially just before Q4. So Kamala, do you want to explain this one? Yeah, because sales conversion is actually one of my favorite metrics and things that I'm just kind of obsessed with. You know, we like to aim to be somewhere between, and this is with lots of room, somewhere between a five to 10% sell through rate a month. Now we're not hitting that right now. Right now we're hitting about four and a half, but we've been working very slowly over time to try and change as many things as we can to make sure to get that sell through rate up. Because the higher we can get that sell through rate, the less games we need in our store, the less items we need to be shipping out, the less, actually not the less items that we need to be shipping out. No, still you gotta ship out as many items. So. But the less items that we need to have in total in our store at a set period of time, if we can have more things selling and less things sitting, that's a good thing. So sales conversion is really important. And we've looked at a whole bunch of metrics and things that we've changed to try to increase that. And ultimately, I think we've made some really good changes. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, so, so what are those changes? We're gonna go ahead and I guess announce them right now on this. Yeah, sure. I yeah. mean, one of the main things that we did was obviously we went back and we looked at our store. We were paying this subscription and eBay provides all these really neat features that you can use alongside the subscription to ideally help sell things and to help promote your store and what you're doing. So what we did was we looked at that and we looked at ways that we could uh, set up our store with different categories and items, set up our storefront with an actual logo and pictures yeah. and things that might... Uh, give a little bit more of a business or even a personality to the brand that maybe something memorable that a buyer will remember and actually have a reason to come back to us to purchase from. We also looked at things like the marketing side, the promoted listing side on eBay. Uh, and additionally, we even looked at things like coupons, and, uh, coupons within the eBay platform and sending out uh, newsletters and things of that nature. A whole bunch of very cool features that we weren't really taking advantage of before that now we've looked into and we're trying to utilize as, mu as much as possible to get more conversions on our sales. Okay, so all of these incentives that eBay gives us, obviously, uh, they even tell us it's like a 30 to 40% increase in, in a quote unquote, a conversion for all of the storefront stuff. So we've got uh, the banner was apparently a big one that we, we just found basically a basic Google image of video game characters, which is pretty cool. Um, and then obviously we've got like common that said, featured listings. So we can simply select some listings that we wanna sell a little bit faster and feature it uh, on the front of our store. We've got featured categories, we've got a uh, marketing banner, uh, things that were recently listed, all these super really cool uh, kind of quote unquote website features that normal websites would have, but now we're able to take advantage of those. Uh, and the reason why we're doing this is because all of those really big video game brands are, or stores already on eBay, um, there's that's essentially what's separating them from us. They're, they have all these incentives that they're using from eBay uh, and they're, they're clearly using them. So for us to catch up and kind of skip all these, everyone else in the middle, we have to be at their level. And to be at the level, we got to obviously uh, take advantage of this. Obviously, another one that we recently implemented that I think has probably played a much bigger role was 30 day free returns. Um, so before returns were something that we fought every single time, especially if we thought we were on the right. Uh, but then we kind of really changed our, I guess, our, the way we see things. Um, and so now if there's a problem with, or the buyer has a problem with the game, uh, they just return it. To be honest, I think if we looked at what we're doing before, the only reason people were returning things or people open return cases was because the item didn't arrive or which rarely happens, the item didn't work, or let's say the item was for the wrong region code. But otherwise there wasn't really that many returns that we were dealing with. So we decided mm -hmm. it's worth the risk. Basically you end up getting bumped to the top of the search results. That's the word. Uh, and well, if eBay is clearly incentivizing us to do so, why wouldn't we? Uh, and then there is other features to having 30 day free returns. Obviously we've got the, uh, seller feedback protection. I believe there's like a 10% discount on final fees. I could be wrong about that yeah, one. I think something like that. So there's a lot of, something like that. a lot of really cool things that come out of that. And again, uh, we really made this decision by looking at our defect rate as it stands right now and realizing what a small portion of our sales and of our business that actually was 
but yet it was taking up a lot of our time fighting these cases, calling eBay. And obviously we didn't fight everything. Uh, you know, when you have an item that doesn't work uh, and they provided, you know, I think we get picture proof for that in the past. Yeah. Or if, um, if you had something that didn't arrive, there wasn't much we could say about that. We were providing uh, refunds on those items already. So it's not like there's a huge difference in the way that we deal with things. Definitely maybe for some more expensive items, consoles and things, having this option is definitely a good incentive for the buyers, but also may come back to, to harm us on some of those. But ultimately, again, it's such a, it's such a low percentage that the, the amount of new sales that we're getting for having these features on greatly outweighs any sort of uh, money we'd be paying back and return shipping or actually giving refunds out. Right, and just real quick, I just want to add that it's not that we're like our quote unquote term of fighting, like what we, what we mean by this is by us asking for pictures, asking for proof that the item doesn't actually work, stuff like that. That just not only takes up a lot of our time, but also the buyer's time. And also now that the buyer is quote unquote having to deal with all this, it's not necessarily a very positive experience that us as a seller isn't trusting them, just like they're able to trust us when they bought the item with no returns, which is obviously something that they had to, uh, that they kind of went into knowing. But uh, I think we should move on to uh, customer service because that's been a big one. And after that, we'll touch upon shipping and the storage unit because those kind of go together. Uh, seller rating or seller, yeah, seller rating. So that was a big one that really uh, hit us uh, out of the blue back in, I believe, April. Mm -hmm. It's arguably yeah. now the only thing that we fight for more than maybe some of our cases that get opened or for any of this sort of eBay things. The one thing that we really look at on the platform is how we can keep that seller rating up as high as possible. Because like you say, is it April? Yeah, the month? yeah, it was like April or May where I think we got bumped down from top rated, which which we just thought was like really easy to keep. We just saying, you just do your job, you know, you maybe answer a couple messages here and there. But out of the blue, like there was no warning or anything. We just got bumped down to uh, above average or something like that. Well, and it actually happened through, we were dealing with a couple of cases yes. with staff that uh, told us to wait on them and let them close because then they could intervene. And unfortunately in doing that, lowered the rating. So they actually were able to give it back to us, but it took a month. And it was, it was a bit too back. late. So essentially what ended up happening was that, uh, and this honestly could have been avoided if we simply do what we do now, and that is answer every single message. Mm -hmm. It takes time, but it only takes, I mean, we think it takes a lot of time, but simply answering a question like, how long is this gonna take to be shipped? Uh, can I get a shipping quota? Can I get pictures? Uh, any sort of item specifics? Simply answering those questions because we know so much about the stuff that we're selling uh, it saves us a lot of time and it saves a lot of trouble. So I think in that you know, case- We can avoid any sort of yeah. cases happening by doing that. And a lot of the things that, that we've sort of uh, neglected to answer in the past have came back to hurt us at the end. If Which we is didn't. why we were above average, not top rated. So it took us two months to get back to top rated. And for us to do that, maybe if you're in this situation, here's how we were able to get out of it. First of all, we answered every single message, no matter how dumb, no matter uh, how silly the question, we answered it, we gave everyone proper shipping quotas. If someone asked for a refund, we didn't really argue it, we just simply returned it, obviously within limits, because um, eBay does, obviously we know the eBay policy quite well at this point. Uh, and as, as much fun it is to be your own eBay lawyer, at the end of the day, <laughs> you can save yourself a lot of trouble by simply just refunding the person their three four dollar game and you, you just move on it's, it's not that much money at the end of the day you, you you'll make uh, a whole lot more money by instead of spending the time to argue and ask for pictures and make the bot the sell the buyer's experience a lot worse you could have just simply listed a whole bunch more exactly. items all the time that we used to spend on customer service has now been kind of pushed into just selling more stuff which is again when you look at the percentage of things that run into issues has been remarkably more efficient than trying to go in and become ebay lawyers i like that term and yeah. fight every single thing. Now, I think there's just real, I think the last thing I want to touch upon this is there's kind of a big difference between refunds, someone asking for a refund and someone opening a direct eBay case. So obviously you've got the refund side of things where someone simply reaches out to you. And those are kind of the ones where, even if we think that we might necessarily be in the wrong, because they, were, they simply reached out to us uh, and kindly asked for us to solve this issue or asked for a refund back because the item didn't arrive. We're, we're, we understand their point of view. We've also bought things from eBay before and things have gone uh, either right or wrong in some situations. So we, we'll just simply give out that refund and that way they know that we're, you know, we're nice sellers, we're, we're there for the buyer experience. But eBay cases, that is where we're kind of allowed to play eBay lawyer, like I say. Uh, but I think we've stepped back a bit and kind of just, if we know that it's gonna take a long time to deal with this and if it's only like a three, $4 game and the game is sent out to like, I don't know, uh, 
somewhere, maybe let's say for example, India or something like that, like three months ago or four months ago, and it doesn't arrive and the person's wanting your feedback. We're not gonna argue that. We're not gonna wow. tell them to wait anymore. At that point, we just, we can assume that we either get the game back through a PO box or it's just never gonna arrive for either one of us. And we just, we, we eliminate it. We don't let it take up headspace. We don't get mad about it. We move on. Uh, but yeah, those are definitely two different situations on how we kind of react. Absolutely. And now should we talk about shipping? One of the most exciting yeah. changes that we've made in terms of the store saving money and making our entire process more efficient, which is that we now use uh, two carriers instead of just one for all yes. of our parcels. And we compare rates on both of them using the eBay platform, which we explained and I've talked about in some of my videos as well. Yep. Uh, the shipping kind of protocol and the way that we do things now directly through eBay saves so much more time than using Snapship or by using uh, whatever the other external Chit -chat platforms or whatever. are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we get really good rates too because you get the corporate rates, especially through the company that we're using now, which is FedEx. Which is so majority of our parcels going to the U.S. and Canada are now shipped using FedEx, which gives us a faster delivery time. I'd say a more reliable delivery time. They're better known for items actually arriving in one shape and arriving quickly. Uh, and it kind of, I guess it's in Canada at least, it's kind of seen as more of a, like a luxury shipping option. Um, and I think that's how we started using it. For some mm -hmm. packages, uh, obviously if, if we're sending like 30, 40 packages with Canada Post and one of them can be sent with FedEx, sometimes it makes more sense to just use Canada Post because we're already there. But in most cases, it's just so so much cheaper, like 50, 60% cheaper, that we just end up saving so much more money by simply using FedEx. And that's helped us rank a little bit higher. It's helped give the buyers a little bit of a better experience. And it's helped overall everyone save quite a bit of money. And obviously eBay added FedEx to the carrier list for a reason. So we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, Otherwise, I think in terms of shipping, we had to really, I think back in March, May or whatever, around then, we noticed that shipping was taking us a long time. Uh, first of all, the storage unit, which we'll touch upon just in a little bit, uh, helped us save quite a bit of time because uh, we were in, you know, everything was in one location or for the most part it was, but uh, we had to somewhat organize it in a way that allowed us to really find items quickly. So that took a little bit of adjusting too. And then obviously we had, the fact that we actually still have to go to the storage unit that takes about 10 15 minute drive there and back so that's 20 30 minutes of just simply driving and then you spend maybe 15 minutes at the unit putting stuff away because of you listed stuff or pulling items so we had to really review how we did things and then we came up with a really cool strategy where one of us goes on monday to the storage unit and then ships out the items on the same day or on tuesday and then the next person goes on thursday and then ships out the item on thursday or friday and that way we're able to hit our two-day handling time quota uh and then obviously we kind of like to we usually rotate so one week someone will do monday the next week someone will do well, monday in this case uh that way because usually our weekends are a lot busier so you know we don't have one person packing all the things and midweek is really slow and we have one person basically packing a few items so that's how we kind of spread it um i guess a little bit more equally so obviously we've tried to we tried our best at least now to eliminate any sort of issues with items getting lost or in, in the storage unit or locking yourself out like i've done once <laughs> <laughs> uh, or basically not being able to find an item because that's been a bit of a problem yeah, and that, as we grew our inventory yeah. system maybe or sorry our growth maybe outpaced our inventory system a bit and we got to a point where we lost a few items that had sold and also maybe mixed up a few items that had sold yeah. and it had been a bit of a mess we've kind of got it under control now with some new changes that we've made but for a while there it was definitely a frustrating part of, of kind of the entire experience of being at the unit and having that many items in one spot right and obviously that's probably a result of us having like two warehouses stuck in a working area and then simply combining the two because we obviously use different systems common that had shelves i kept everything in boxes uh and combining it took a little bit of adjusting too uh but obviously we had to make some changes we had to kind of keep things organized so now we have new storage units everything is at the storage unit now including common that stuff uh and the reason why we did that was because now one person at least we both know that one person is shipping everything i'm not um you know having to mark things as shipped when they weren't shipped because i don't know if common lad picked the stuff up from from his studio and then shipped it out or he's not wondering if i went to the storage unit because he already has some of the stuff at his place and also we have the problem of combined orders which is something that we incentivize oh, yeah a lot of buyers to do because they save a lot of money on shipping, especially international orders. So what ended up happening is I come and I would have four of the games and then the other four games are at the storage unit, but I'd have to go to the storage unit on Monday because it was my turn. 
And now we're just wasting time and gas yeah. trying to exchange Or one games. of us would ship one out without knowing that they were combined. That's happened like, once or twice. Like, so yeah, yeah, it's just a mess. And so consolidating it all to one location has been a huge time save and just sort of a headache saver as well. Yeah, and we obviously have once a month where we just take about, I think it's an hour or two. I mean, it's mainly been about an hour. We go to the storage unit. We look at what sort of shelves are, are starting to empty. We look at uh, what sort of items are sitting that, where they shouldn't be. <clears throat> And that's kind of really helped us avoid the situation. We had this recently happen where a person bought two games, we couldn't find them, and we found the games like a month later, uh, which was a bit embarrassing, but <laughs> we shipped those out. So now every month we clean things up, we make space for new inventory, figure out ways that we could, uh, we, we basically just kind of, it's, it's kind of a nice visual to see how the business is doing, how many things that we really have, where can we move things around so it's easier to find. Um, we also, Organize our loose games. So those are list or those are um, all organized alphabetically with by console, which saved us a lot of time because Absolutely. before we had, I think we had like two or three thousand loose games. And if they're just all in one bucket, you're going to be there for hours looking for. Yeah, it. we were looking through thousands of discs. It was a pain in the butt. Awful every time something sold. <laughs> so between that and the movies being organized yes, by movies a big uh, one title well. and letters, uh, has been a huge time save in terms of pulling stuff. Yeah, I think that's that's about it for the storage unit. And then I think just lastly future plans and then kind of Q4 predictions. Uh, I think one future plan, not that's gonna happen maybe this year or next year per se, but something that we have on our horizon is a mini warehouse or an industrial workspace. It'd be kind of cool to have, obviously make great videos for the YouTube channel, but I think it'd be just a fun work environment. Uh, so that's obviously in the horizon. There's no plans to do it yet because the storage unit uh, is something we're still adjusting to. We have to pay rent for it every month. So we've adjusted our current budget for that. Um, that's going to be kind of cool to do. Obviously, Q4 predictions. You have any that you have in mind? Or... It's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're going to be uh, doing maybe a couple more trips to the post office a week than we yeah. normally do. Yeah, it's going to be going to be really good. We have some some really crazy predictions without getting into any numbers, but yeah. quite a few percentages uh, <laughs> up is what we're predicting. And I think if we continue to list at what we're listing at right now at the same rate, we're going to have a crazy fourth quarter. Right, and that's exactly why we're trying all these new store features out, free returns. Because if they work now, they're going to work in Q4. But if they don't work now, well, they're probably not going to work in Q4. Yeah, so and we we're... can make adjustments accordingly, especially when it comes to promoted listing rates. Exactly. Uh, when it comes to setting up actual promotions and sales and events and seeing what works and what doesn't will allow us to sort of have a really good idea as to what might work as well in fourth quarter. And uh, I think one other thing that we want to we kind of want to reach as a quote unquote goal by Q4, so at the end of the summer, um, is have I think 40 or 50 daily listings is our mm -hmm. goal. So we're working towards that right now. Uh, obviously, that's double what we're doing right now. So it's, we might have to slow it down just a bit because our supplier can only get us so many games. We only have one supplier and we only have so much money in the budget for games. So we'll figure out that as the time comes. Uh, and then obviously with the uh, new store features, we are trying to figure out ways to specifically move certain items like consoles or expensive games a lot faster than other ones. And that kind of brings us to, I think our last little uh, thing that we're gonna try out here in the summer, which is we're gonna start doing whatnot auctions, or at least we're gonna try to do one. If that goes well, we'll do more. So if there's anything that you guys want us to sell, comment us that comment that down below. All of our store links are in the description. So everything that we have listed and that will be uh, maybe auctioned will be over there uh, so that could be kind of cool for moving some some inventory a lot faster especially now that the storage unit's filling up a little bit more um and yeah i think that's basically all the announcements that we have that's kind of how we changed our approach to running your ebay store hopefully this video was uh brought some sort of insight on how we uh how we overcame some of the challenges that we had anything else you want to add no i mean i think that's pretty much it yeah very exciting stuff that happened hopefully you guys learned a couple of things in this video that you can implement in your own stores to make them grow faster and improve your sell through rates and all of those fun things and yeah yeah and hopefully we'll be able to see you guys in another video in about three four months time or if we make one sooner then you see us then otherwise thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video make sure to go ahead drop it down below check out common lad uh, all his links are in the description a bunch of new exciting stuff is coming to both of our channels so obviously stay subscribed hit the notification bell um, check out our tiktok see you on the next one peace